Last lesson, we looked at finding the mean and variance of a discrete random variable x. And we are now going to look at extending that to finding the mean and variance of a transformation g of x of that discrete random variable. So we've seen previously that if we wanted to find uh, the expected value of x squared for a discrete random variable x, we could do this by calculating x squared multiplied by the probability of that x value occurring and then adding up each of the values for every x. So we can extend this to find the expected value of any function of x. So we do this by multiplying the values of the function of x by its probability and then adding up all of these values. So for example, we have a discrete random variable here with the following distribution. You can see we have the x values along the top and the probabilities of these x's occurring here. If we wanted to find the expected value that 2 over x could take, so in other words, what is the mean value of 2 over whatever x is? We could do this by doing 2 over x for each of the x's and multiplying by the probability. So 2 over 2 multiplied by 0.2. Then 2 over 4 multiplied by the probability 0.25. Then 2 over 8 multiplied by its probability. 2 over 10 multiplied by its probability and 2 over 13 multiplied by its probability. So the expected value of 2 over x would be 0.446. Pause the video now and find the mean or expected value and the variance of this discrete random variable x. So the expected value of x will have been 1 times 0 0.6, 3 times 0 0.3, and 5 times 0 0.1 added together. So we get 2. And then the variance of x is going to be the formula that we used last lesson, which was the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared. So this should have come out as 1.8. Now, Using the formula on the previous slide, I would like you to find the expected value and the variance of y, where y is x but transformed here. So for example, in the first question here, instead of x being 1, 3 and 5, because it's x plus 3, the x values will be 4, 6 and 8. So pause the slide now and work out e of, x, e of y and variance of y. OK, so for question one, the expected value of y should have come out as 5 and the variance will have come out as 1.8. So for question two, the x values are now x minus 2. So in each case, you are subtracting 2 from each of the x's. So the x values will be 1, uh, minus 1, 1 and 3. And we get an expected value of zero, a variance of 1.8. Question three, the x values have all been multiplied by four, so they're going to be four, 12, and 20. And we get an expected value of eight and a variance of 28.8. Question four, we get an expected value of variance. Question five, and question six. So take a moment to look at the expected value and the variance of y and compare it to the expected value and the variance of x, considering how this transformation may have arrived at these answers. So we're just going to look algebraically at what's going on and then we'll return to the previous example to see if we can see that happening. So if we were trying to find the expected value of ax plus b, so this means that the x values have all been multiplied by a and have all had b added on. So there is a linear transformation has happened and it's the same transformation to all of the x's. 
For example, they could all have been multiplied by 3 and then add 5. So the formula would be the sum of each ax plus b value multiplied by its probability. Now we could calculate these separately. We could find the sum of um, axi times pi and the sum of b times pi. So all we've done here is we've expanded out this bracket and because we're just adding all the values together, we've split it up into two separate sums which are then being added later. This is a bit like in summations where we can split sums up into several parts. Now just like in summations, because a is a constant and b is a constant, we can pull those to the front of the sum and we can add up all of the xi pi values first and then multiply by the a at the end. And here we've pulled the b out to the front so we would add up all the probabilities and again multiply by the b at the end. So we now need just to think in context what this actually means. Now we know that the sum of all of the x values times the p values, we know that this is just the expected value of x. So this here would be a times that which is the expected value of x. Consider why the sum of all the probabilities would just be 1. Well that's because if we add up all of the probabilities it adds up to 1. So uh, b multiplied by 1 is just b. So we can see the expected value of ax plus b is just multiplying the expected value of x by a and then adding b onto the end. So we're now going to do something similar for the variance. So this is a slightly more complicated calculation. You don't need to memorize this. This is just so you can see where the formula comes from. So we're going to find the variance of ax plus b. Now we know the variance of ax plus b is the expected value of ax plus b squared. So that's this here. So it's AX, uh, axi plus b squared times pi um, sigma minus the expected value of ax plus bi all squared. So that's this expected value in here all squared. So we're just going to expand out some of these things. So if you expand out this bracket, you get this here. And this here, because we know that this inside the bracket is just the expected value of, um, this is just a times the expected value of x plus b. This is from the last slide where we found the expected value of a x plus b. So that's just this squared. We can then expand this out. So basically what we've done here is we've expanded this bracket, multiplied it by pi, and then we split it into three separate summations for each of the three parts. So that's there. Here, we've just expanded this bracket. This is a bracket multiplied by itself, so we've just expanded it out. Just be careful, there's a minus in front there, so we've distributed that minus sign across all three terms. We can then look at what some of these things are. So we can see that there are some constants inside the summations. So a squared is a constant, so that can come to the front. 2ab is a constant, so that goes here. b squared is a constant here. We can then work out what these things actually are. So we know that sigma xi squared pi, we know that that is just the expected value of x squared. We know that sigma xi pi is just the expected value of x. We know that sigma pi is just 1, is the sum of the probabilities. So this simplifies down here. Well then notice that quite a few of these things will cancel out. For example, we've got 2ab expected value of x and minus 2ab expected value of x. We've also got b squared and minus b squared. So the only bits that are left are those bits there. Now we notice that there's an a squared in both terms. So we can factorise that out. And then what's left in here, expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared, that is just the formula for variance of x. So this is just a squared times the variance of x. So what this tells us is that if we've got a linear transformation of um, x, so times x by a and add b. If you want to find the variance of that, it's just the variance of x but multiplied by the a squared. So notice that the b doesn't affect the variance in any way, it's just the just multiplying by a squared. So we're just going to go back to this slide again and just see if we can now spot what's going on. So now that we know the rule, here look, we can see if this is ax plus b, we can see that a is 1 and b is 3. So the expected value of y, we have just multiplied the expected value of x by 1 and then added 3 to get 5. 
for the variance because we're just multiplying by a squared. So 1 squared, 1.8 times 1. So yeah. Let's just try another one here. So for example, this one at the bottom here, look. Um, X has been multiplied by 3 and then added 5. So the expected value of Y is just the expected value of X times it by 3 and add 5. So we get 11. Now for the variance of Y, because we just multiply by A squared, we're just multiplying this variance by 3 squared, multiplying by 9, so we get that. So the reason that um, the variance is only affected by A and not B is because B is just a term that's added onto all the values. And if you take uh, a set of values, if you just add the same number onto all of them, it doesn't affect how spread out they are. It just, just makes them all bigger. So that's why the variance is not affected by B. So just look through these, pause the slide again, and just convince yourself that the rule uh, for AX plus B um, works for each of these expected values and variance. OK, so just to summarise those rules, um, if we want to find the expected value of AX plus B, we just multiply the expected value of X by A and we add B. If we want to find the variance of AX plus B, we just take the variance of X and multiply it by A squared. And as an additional rule, because the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, if we want to know the standard deviation of AX plus B, we just take the standard deviation of X and multiply by A, not A squared. Now complete exercise 1B on page 257.